Hey, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Inspired Lady Podcast. It's Belle here. And I feel like I haven't chatted with you guys in a while, I'll be honest, because there's been so much travel. And this is my first episode back of kind of talking a little bit more real time, so recording the week of. And I miss this. I miss this so much. I feel like this is what I love about the podcast is that it's a little bit more about what I'm going through exactly in those moments and then sharing how I'm dealing with everything, handling things, and giving all the tips and tools that I'm personally utilizing in those moments and i haven't gotten to do that although we have had some incredible guests lately so i hope you guys have been enjoying those episodes but yeah we're back and if you're listening to this the day it releases or maybe a few days after we're about to enter a new month okay july is about to start and i wanted to talk a little bit about how i plan out my months because it's pretty rigorous it's pretty intense but it also keeps me extremely on task i get a lot done in my months and i love 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 what it looks like for me so i wanted to share that with you guys and make sure that you are equipped with the same tools and are able to maybe start planning your months out with a little bit more intentionality behind it and if you're not listening in the time frame of july starting that's okay because everything we're going to talk about today um is going to be good for literally the rest of all of time, months, forever, all of the things, okay? So like you can always use this to plan out your months. And I'm excited about that, okay? So without further ado, let's jump right in. So drinking today, drinking today, I literally just have water, but that's okay. I feel like I'm just in my rehydration era. Uh, I was in I was literally traveling so much, guys, and it was so amazing. Um, So the first trip where we went to Canada and Alaska, we were with my family. It was like a massive graduation trip because Matt commissioned as a second lieutenant in the army. I got my master's and my brother finished his bachelor's degree um, all within like the same week. (laughs) So we went to Canada and Alaska, did some hiking, went and saw glaciers, wildlife. It was a chilly trip and... Honestly, maybe not one that I'll go on again, but I'm so excited that I did it because it was so fun. I just think that I prefer maybe a little bit warmer vacations, but it was really cool and it was fun to see the glaciers and go on hikes and do all of that. But yeah, I think maybe I'm I'm more for like the warmer weather, but it was really good. And then right after that, literally got back on Sunday. On Thursday, I flew out to Spain. This was a work trip for me, so I was working the whole time but it was still so magical so i was in spain morocco finland and then i ended up in belgium where i flew home from after flights got canceled it was very hectic the day trying to get home because the the guys in belgium my flight gets canceled i was there with another girl um and we didn't know it was canceled no one told us until we were there to get on the flight So we went to go get it rescheduled and the guy looks at us and he's like, okay, this is the flight to Chicago you need to go to instead of London, like we were supposed to, and you need to run right now. So we ended up being 45 minutes late to the flight, but they held it for us because they hold flights in Europe. It's not like America where you miss it by like 30 seconds and they close the doors. In fact, I get to the gate and they go, ma'am, you've been selected for a random drug testing. And I was like, excuse you like we're literally the flight's 45 minutes late like we need to get on this flight to go they're like don't worry it won't leave without you so they took me like to a totally different section made me take off my shoes went through my whole bag swabbed my hands like did a whole pat down while the flight's waiting to leave i was upgraded to business class so that was nice but i get on and you could just see everyone looking at me like who does this girl think she is like we've been waiting 45 minutes to leave and you're getting on the plane Um, so the guy next to me was not happy with me, but you know what? It was a quick 10 hour flight and I made it back. So it's okay. But besides that, the trip was really incredible. Um, and I'm, I'm just so grateful for the opportunities that I'm given for all of these things. It's, it's wild to me. Um, but yeah, so we're back. And as soon as I landed, all I could think about was the new house. Okay. So yes, we are moving. Um, this week, actually we get our closing date. So, which is, which is wild because we've always been given an estimate end of July, but like our contractor man, I love him. He is, he is speeding through, but like, 
not in a way that's like making me concerned you know what I mean but he just like is like hey like I ordered your tile early so it arrived early I ordered your brick early so it arrived early and I think also they do that on purpose because they if they tell you it won't be ready until September the house and then all of a sudden it's going smoothly it's going fast you're passing inspections all of this is happening you're like oh my goodness you're amazing you're amazing when really it's like actually on their timeline but they just told us it was extended I totally think they did that but you know what it makes it more exciting for me so I'm not mad I'm, re I'm really not okay so all of our cabinets are in our flooring is in I literally am just blown away by it's like actually a house now it's like a real house and if you want to see pictures or updates I post them probably like bi-weekly on my Instagram so you can go back and look at some of the construction updates and then also see the beautiful brick and all of that. I did cream walls with really light wooded floors um, and some brown accents. I really just wanted it to feel warm. You know, I feel like there was a trend for a while where everything was like gray. Um, so gray walls, gray flooring with white accents and that can be really beautiful and it can look really sharp and chic. But when Matt and I were talking about our vision for the home, because yes, we have a vision for this home of just being a place of just being able to like come and be comforted and just feel like the presence of God around you and to be a place where people feel so welcomed. So when we were talking about this vision, we just really wanted it to feel warm and soft. So I'm doing soft edges for a lot of things. I want a round dining room table, um, really soft rounded bar stools for our countertops. We're going to hang some linen curtains, even though we'll still use blinds, but the curtains will still be hung in between the windows because we have lots of windows. That was the one big, big splurge. You know, when we were designing this home, we, we had a budget and stuff and we stayed under budget for everything. But when it came to the windows, that was the one place that we allowed the splurge a little bit because it's something that's really hard to add on later if if you even can. And it's the bones of the house. And I just with what I do for work. Um, I really wanted windows, so actually my office has extra windows in it, um, which was such a sweet, sweet blessing that I was able to get the windows extended in the office, so it's not just one, it's like a double window. And then our living room, kitchen, and dining room have like these massive windows that will let in all the light. Our house is um, north facing, so it's the south side that has all of these beautiful windows. We back up to a retention pond that has like this stunning greenery so no one can see the back of our house if you're driving up because we're right behind this whole thing of like greenery and gorgeousness we have walking paths all around um including right behind our house which is really really sweet because if you guys know me you know i love my hot girl walks and um also a little blessing the back fence is like made of iron instead of wood so we have wood on the side but then the back fence is um iron like iron bars and it looks sharp it looks really sharp and that's the hoa um, for our neighborhood like they require that because they really want it to look good okay but i was terrified that tank was gonna fit through the fence okay i was like guys what am i gonna do if my dog can fit through this fence like i'm gonna have to come up with something i don't want to look ugly but anyways we went and tested it out with um our neighbor's fence actually and it does he the baby doesn't fit okay he does not fit his butt is too big so we are very very blessed with that we're not gonna have to worry about him sneaking through the iron fence and then the wood on the side is amazing it's super super privacy orientated um they're like 10 feet tall i'm not even joking so i'm just so excited it's like getting closer i have a massive wish list on amazon and wayfair of things that i'll be ordering um, here soon to try to get just ready for this new season. Oh, guys, I am so happy. I've been using Lemonade and Pinterest a ton to get inspiration and my studio space. So my office, I, I mean, I work from home for so many things, right? I have the nonprofit, I have the influencer firm, I have the content creation and the podcast. So like this office space is really, really important to me. A company sent me this beautiful mural that like hangs on the wall. It's like wallpaper, um, kind of like wallpaper, but not quite. And they sent it to me to put on my wall. I'm working with companies to get desks and just like everything is flowing so nicely for this new office space. And I'm so excited about it. It's going to be beautiful. And I've also been doing some DIY projects to save on house costs. Um, so like Matt's family was getting rid of a 
stunning dresser that was wood it was definitely beaten up a little bit a little older and I was like whoa 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 give it to me so I went on and did like a chalk paint with a wax over the top to give it like a, a really soft finish um it looks beautiful and then a polyacrylic topper on it to make sure it doesn't like actually like rip off or anything I have been killing it in the DIYs, like absolutely killing it, and I've been having so much fun. So anyways, if you want to follow any of that, same thing. I've been posting all that on my TikTok and Instagram reels, so it's it's been a good time, guys, okay? So with that being said, it is almost July. It is almost the month of the closing of the house. I have been traveling like crazy, and I've been staying on top of it. I'm not even going to like sugarcoat this, okay? Like I have been staying on top of everything pretty dang well for everything that's going on there's a lot of chaos around me I have boxes piled up everywhere and it's a lot so the fact that I've been able to keep hitting goals to stay with my routines has been really impressive and that is ultimately due to the planning that I do and it's just really really helpful to have a vision so I love I love a good yearly review you guys know New Year's Day favorite holiday I don't care what the haters want to say about how fake people are about their goals. Like, I'm sorry if you're making goals, you have a vision for your life, you have ambition, and that is freaking amazing. And I want that for every single day, ultimately, okay, is I want to feel that nothing can stop me inspired, motivated feeling. And all like, guys, it's not there every day, trust me. But a really good time to kind of evaluate and reflect on these things is the first of every month or at least leading up to the first okay so lucky for us the first is a Saturday again we're talking July and this is really really helpful because I love to take like 30 minutes to an hour I'm not even joking at the beginning of every month and really evaluate where I'm at where I'm going am I aligned and staying organized okay so this is what I do literally at the beginning of every single month um, a couple tools that I use I do use my Christian planner uh, it has a yearly vision breakdown it also has a monthly calendar monthly goal breakdown and then the weekly goal breakdown and then daily okay so it like literally breaks it all down for you it helps you with your habits everything you could possibly want I do have a code for you guys code bell um, at Christian planner is obviously linked and this isn't necessarily like promotional. Like I want you guys to know I have used them for years, for years. And then they reached out to me and were like, Belle, like we love you. We love you. Oh, we just want to work with you. No, that's not really how it went. But they did reach out to me and they were like, hey, we would love to give you a code for your followers. So that way they can save a little bit of money. And I believe it's 15% off. It might be 20. But anyways, I love them so much. I get their planners every single year to use throughout the entire time because it helps break down the months but I also use Google Calendar okay Google Calendar is amazing I color code absolutely everything going on I love the task feature I don't set everything as events I do a lot of tasks on there especially with collaborations um, to make sure that I'm on track with whatever the company needs from me okay so there are a lot of niche things that I do that need goals and a lot of check-in time but I think that this can really be valuable to anyone, no matter what you do. Rather, if you like run a small business, if you are a student, if you are searching for a new job or you just got a new job or you've been in your career for 30 years, like it doesn't matter. This is a really, really good practice to have to make sure you're living on brand. OK, I know we did an episode a little bit ago about branding and guys, I can't believe how many of you like reached out and you're like, this was such a fun episode. It was so sweet of you. And I think that it's a really fun idea to just like know yourself and know your brand. But more than that, like your mission statement of like who you are why do you show up every day and what is your goal what has God placed on your heart well you need to make sure you're tracking with that every month okay so like you need to show up for yourself so breakdown let's get into the practical tips because you know I love that okay so there are two things that I go over on a wide scale during these monthly evaluations or planning sessions okay the first one are the actual calendar events okay I have to know what I'm doing for the month even though some of these things are not until like three or four weeks having them in the back of my head and knowing that they're coming up in the month is so so helpful okay so what does this mean appointments and meetings mainly um, I love to go over and see okay doctor's appointments am I good do I need a checkup for anything do I need to go to the dentist okay what about 
like meetings for work i have standing meetings but then also are there any meetings that i need to schedule are there things like that that i need to get on here and block out a specific time frame for similarly to that then is i also will check in on my friendships okay and this might seem like a little strategic but i think you need a good strategy to truly have strong friendships when you are busy okay it's not it's really easy for me to get so focused in what i need to do that i let the relationship side of things tend to fall as a back burner okay and i'm really it's really not a problem with matt and i matt and i do a really good job especially because matt's so ambitious that we love to have check-in sessions we love to go to brunch so much we love brunch and then sundays are really days that we spend together um because we're both off work and we both try to protect that day as much as we can like for matt his job isn't even open on sundays and he usually tries he's getting his master's degree right now so he usually tries to have all his school done before that as well so really sundays are our days so i never struggle with that with matt or my family even because it's easy to um have it stack for me and call people and check in but where i really do struggle is with those friendships okay so at the beginning of the month i look at kind of like my friendships and i'm like okay who have i maybe been slacking with who do i need to you know set some time aside for and plan a coffee date or a phone call or just do something to kind of support them in where they are and that's a really really good practice for me because it doesn't come naturally and i don't want to be a friend that fails to show up for others so similarly then i go over all the birthdays in the month okay and i literally will write them down on my calendar view but then i also go to my weekly view on my christian planner or in google and i will make sure i know what birthdays are coming up so i can either do a card or plan a dinner or do something for them for their birthdays so like this upcoming month i have my mom's birthday and matt's birthday as well as a baby shower for my sweet sweet friend so there's like a lot of things that i need to know okay i need to be getting gifts i need to be getting cards i need to like plan something special for these time frames and in a hectic season post travel pre-move it would be easy to let these things fall through the cracks but because i'm being intentional about these relationships I am literally making time for them in my calendar, okay? I'm marking it on the massive monthly view calendar, but then I'm also going to that week and making sure I at least acknowledge the person on their birthday if it's not something that I need to do something more for, okay? So the next thing that I will check over is making sure I have enough of all of my medicine, all of my vitamins, all of my greens to get through the month to make sure that I'm sticking with my healthy habits, okay? So those are things that I need to check in and make sure that I am good to go until at least August when I do that planning session. And then if I need to go get something at that point, I will or order something. And same with grocery days. I plan what days are grocery days. I don't go as far as to necessarily plan out meals each week. Um, if I'm feeling overly ambitious, I might do a little bit of a menu. Ideally, I would love to get to the point where I have a pretty standard monthly menu that I just keep recycling because really after four weeks, if I restart it, I don't think I would be sick and tired of whatever week one was because it's taken four weeks to get through the menu. That's a long-term goal for me. I'm not there yet though, so that's okay. And then my next thing that I go over at this point is my finances, okay? It is really, really important to review your finances, okay? Because at the beginning of a month, you've paid bills, you have credit card statements, your rent or mortgage are all due. You have things that you maybe need to look at and say, wow, this month I ate out way too much or I spent way too much money doing this and I need to cut back on that or wow, I did a really good job saving. So now there's a surplus of funds here that I can maybe put towards a vacation or something like that. You know, it's funny because I was actually tagged by someone in a video that says like you watch people travel the world and do all this stuff and you don't know that secretly they're in so much debt. And I'm actually not, I'm completely debt free. So is my husband, we're, we're debt free. Um, we don't even owe on cars or anything. Obviously when we go to take this mortgage out, we're gonna have a little bit of debt. Um, we're gonna have a mortgage, but we even have a plan to get that paid off. Like I'm not even kidding to get the house paid off because we live below our means and we work really, really hard. I actually would love to do a finance episode. It might be a little niche, but there's so much that I have learned the last couple of weeks, um, something that we're going to get into actually in this episode is I always try to plan something to learn 
really, really well, or at least to try to have a grasping understanding of. And um, last month, it was investing and finances. And I like really just try to dive in. I read books about it. I will listen to podcasts. I will watch videos and I try to understand something. Um, and I and that changes all the time. But investing in finances is something that tends to occur a lot for me because I never want to not know how to handle what God has given me. And it's ultimately a task from God to steward your money well. So we're going to actually get into a podcast episode on this pretty soon about all my financial tips, how we got out of debt. Um, Matt brought in some debt um, and we paid it off I right after we got married. I don't even think we were married a year. So like how this all works because there are ways, there are really, really healthy ways to work with money and I'm not saying we're perfect, but I think that we've been able to learn from a lot of really impressive people and it's been very, very cool to see how it goes. So every single month I go over our finances with Matt. We have what we call our budget meeting. Usually we have our coffee with us and we just sit down and we go over what's in our accounts, where our money went, how much we spent, where the bills are, and just check in. And it's really helpful to do that, okay? So those are what I do kind of as like standing arrangements, appointments I'm setting, things that I need to check in on at the month. Um, and, but then we go into the next session of goals, Okay. I always, always, always want to be moving the needle professionally and personally, okay? And this is the way that I look at it. If I set monthly goals and create weekly plans, then take daily actionable steps, I, I literally, you, you have no choice but to move. And even if it's not in the direction that you originally thought you were at the beginning of the year, you are going to move. You are going to change your life. And in a year, you're going to be somewhere that you didn't even recognize because you were moving forward. Okay. So again, if you make monthly goals, weekly plans, and then daily steps, you're going to be untouchable. Like seriously, you're just going to be moving so fast, so far. And that is really exciting. Okay. But that has to start. And I would even maybe back that up one more and say with a yearly vision. Okay, so I adjust my year, my at the end of the year, a vision for the new year. Every month I make these goals. And then I plan out what those goals look like each week. And then before on Sundays, I look at what the plan is for the week and I literally make my actionable steps each day. Okay, so this is this is a constant movement, but it's in bite-sized pieces. So it's not that crazy. You know what I mean? It's not me sitting down at the beginning of the month planning each day. No, I know that on Sundays I'm going to break down my week more, but I need to know where I'm going with this, okay? So monthly goals, let's talk about this. So first of all, like as an example for the podcast, I will plan out, obviously there's going to be probably four episodes in the month. Okay, what do I want those episodes to be? And great, I have now a really solid goal of recording these four episodes and I place them on each week so that way I know that when it comes that week I need to figure out the plan for it. Same with shooting for social media. If I have collabs that are due, so I work with a lot of companies which is so incredible. Many of them are on retainer for multiple months. I work with Airy, I work with Lemon 8, I work with several companies where every single month they need something from me. So I know that my goals are to hit those and to do them well, to get that content out to them and to do it in a way that they are pleased with it and want to continue that retainer with me, okay? So I make the goal of, you know, I need this many airy posts, this many Lemonade posts, this many Polly Park posts, and I need to do these one-time collabs with um, XYZ companies, okay? And so I have these plans and I set on which we, which week they're due. So I go through and say, okay, week one of July, I need this due. And same with week two. And I go through each week and set the goal of how many posts are going to come out of that. Okay. And then when I go to plan that week, guess what? I know what I need for to hit my goal for the month. And I break it down into daily steps. Okay. So it's very repetitive, but it is so, so good. Okay. You can do this with school. When I was doing school, I did this all the time, monthly reviews. And it also helps the semester to go so much faster. If you're in your spring semester and you do this in January, February, March, and then April, usually college semesters end by the first week of May. So it's like you're doing this four times, this massive evaluation, and you're done with your semester. So it can help you even look forward to things because it makes the time feel a little bit faster. 
and I love that. I love that so much. So I will do this for all all of my podcasting needs, my social media needs, and usually when I do that, then I also will go through and evaluate my numbers. So for if you were doing school, you'd want to evaluate your grades. If you were doing a small business, you want to evaluate your sales over the month. For me, I evaluate analytics. I look at my follower count where I was a month ago because you also get to see growth then. You know what I mean? Because so many times I'll be like, oh, I'm stuck at 8,000 followers, have been for like two months. Well, what I'm not seeing is that I've grown over 100 followers each of those months. So, you know, there, there's growth to be seen there and that's exciting. Same with like the podcast. I love to check the analytics because guys, we are growing and it is so, so fun to see the growth of this podcast because I really do feel like it's a closer community than social media and it makes me happy. So to see, you know, the listens slowly pile up for every episode, it's so exciting to me. So it also serves as a big motivator. So once I have some of those like tangible number goals in mind, I know that maybe at the end of July, I want to hit 8,750 followers on Instagram, okay? So I'm going to write that down as my goal. On TikTok, I want to hit 3,000 followers. And I make like tangible goals that I can mark off, okay? Not that it's all about numbers at all, but when you're trying to grow a business, which is what it is for me, a business, you have to be able to see growth, but you also need to plan for growth, okay? So I will literally mark through all of this, how many collabs I want, how many posts I want going out, all of these things. And also I love as an achiever, as a three, to go back and mark off when I hit those goals. There are some times where I'll have a viral video and I hit that goal within the first three days. And then there's other times where I don't hit that goal. I really don't. So I adjust and I say, okay, you know what? That was too lofty. We're going to, we're going to lower the goal a little bit for the next month. So some of those tangible number goals. And then what I move into is a little bit more of the planning side of, okay, what do I want to be studying for the Bible this month? Okay. I love my daily grace studies. Usually those go for about eight weeks. So I know like I'm good for two months, but then I need to adjust or sometimes I want to take a break and study something else for a little bit. And so I'll go through what is the plan for the month long Bible study or week long, maybe. Um, Same with books to read. I will make a to read list. It helps my mind stay sharp, make sure that I'm reading books that are actually on my read list. And um, at the same time, also what personal development or learning books do I want to be reading, okay? Because you don't just necessarily want to stay stagnant where you are with knowledge, especially after graduation. I felt that pressure of, you know, like I never have to learn anything ever again. And I don't want to live that way. I constantly want to be bettering myself, even if it's not personal development books, like I said, finance books are so helpful to read and it really is tangible for my life okay so I figure out what books I want to read do all of that and this is what I was talking about earlier I really do try to hone in on one topic that I need to get better at I need to learn okay so there's a couple examples for this like I said investing is huge for me I learned a lot about different types of investment. I actually have a financial planner through my job, which is really helpful. So I will email him questions. I'll ask to meet with him and like I will spend a month. My goal is to learn more about investing. Okay. So what I do is I will go through and say, okay, if my goal is to literally learn more about how to handle my money, I will make plan a plan then for the weeks. And I will say, okay, so to start off, I just want to call my financial, my, my financial guy and ask him what his, ideas are what he thinks are best week two I'm gonna read a book or two about investing okay week three I'm gonna watch a few videos and learn from people who are offering free resources online week four I'm gonna implement some of these things that I've learned and talk with Matt and invest certain amounts of money into Uh, expanding my portfolio so ultimately as an investor I really do have a wide range and these are all things we'll talk about in the financial episode but like the next month then you know what I really feel like I want to learn how to cook better I really do so I will make a plan then for the week and say okay so I want to cook two new recipes here two new recipes here and you know we're going to really challenge ourselves to make a really fancy dinner here and a really fancy dessert and I will plan out how I'm going to reach the goal of learning how to cook better okay and then when it comes to that week I will pick out those actual recipes go to the store and then the day of I will actually take the actionable steps of learning how to cook better okay um there was one month where I really wanted to learn about the toxins in my home okay so I 
week one listened to a bunch of podcasts week two reached out to some people asked some questions week four researched new brands um for cleaning detergent all of my products makeup everything and then week like the final week of the month i went through and i implemented it i ordered some things that i needed i changed out some products and to try to really be create a toxin free home so you see there's so many options but they're always things that i'm interested in learning and i want to better my life with and so i plan a resource a week basically and then try to end the month with an actionable step of what I want to do okay so I really want to learn how to do a lot of things in my life and I don't ever want to be sidelined from that and I don't ever want to lose that passion of how can I better my life so I'm going to make sure we're always hitting that okay and then lastly there are always extra things extra goals that I have okay so for example in July I have a magazine interview that I was reached out to do um they asked if I wanted to be one of the article features or whatever and I need to go get interviewed for that magazine great I also have been reached out to for a couple publishers for um, a book that I'm writing which is actually was my master's final project um, back in this past semester and so I need to meet with a publisher okay so we have a magazine interview I need to meet with a publisher I also have to schedule in time to close on our house which is kind of a long process. Like we have a lot of paperwork to do. We have to bring a lot of information with us. So I need to schedule a time to do that. So, you know, there's always these extra plans that I need to make. And I don't want to slack on those because those are moving the needle in really extreme ways. Okay. The fact that I'm meeting with a publisher, that is an extreme needle movement on the scheme of my life. And I want to pursue that. So I already have that schedule for July and I put that in because I know that that's a priority for me. Same with this magazine interview, same with the closing date and getting all of that figured out. I think that adding in these extra pieces, these extra goals that are just going to push you a little bit further are the things that when at the end of the year, you look back and you're like, how in the world did I get from that point to where I am now? That's insane. And every single year since I've started doing this, when I was like, my gosh, maybe 16, I have looked back at my year and thought, I don't even recognize where I came from. And I want to continue to live that way. I want to continue to constantly push the boundaries on my life and make it better to live to where God needs me to go to literally push past all the things that I tell myself I can't do because I'm the dream is too lofty. The goal is too big and break it down into actionable pieces. And you have to do that on a monthly basis. You have to evaluate where you are, where you're going, what you're doing and how it's all working out because otherwise you're going to stay stagnant. And you don't want to do that. You want to move forward, even in small ways. Even if your goal is you're just going to do a project in your home or in your room literally a month. You know what I mean? These don't even need to be massive. But if your goal is to, you know, feel a little bit better about what you're eating, okay, start with research. Make your first week all about resources. Make your second week finding all the recipes. Make your third week going and trying some of the recipes. And make your fourth week planning out what worked for you, what didn't work for you, what did you like, what did you didn't like. And like all of these things, you know what I mean? You just have so many options when you truly take the time to plan out what you're doing, okay? So I'll repeat it one more time for you guys because I think this is some good advice, okay? Create monthly goals, weekly plans, and take daily steps, okay? And when you create monthly goals, make weekly plans, and take daily steps, your life will change. Looking back after a month of doing this process, you will be so proud of yourself. You will be so excited to see your growth and how far you've come. And I'm so excited thinking about this for you, about where you're headed, what you're going to do. It's going to be so impactful, so powerful, and it's so simple a little bit of time to evaluate and to review and to strategize with yourself and look at all the things you're gonna be able to pull off. Don't stop learning, don't stop pushing, and don't stop being ambitious for what your dreams are, okay? I am so excited for you guys. This is really, really good, powerful things, I think, and that's not just because I came up with it. I just really do have a a dream for you guys that is going to be really really amazing to look back after july is over and just be like dang 
This was my most productive month, my most meaningful month, and also my most restful month because when you don't feel like you're floundering, you're able to rest intentionally, you're able to enjoy time with friends intentionally, and you know what you're doing. You have a clear vision, a clear path, and that's all this is. It's writing the map out for your month, okay? So anyways, I love you guys so, so much, and it's gonna be a really good month, okay? This is our month, and I am so, so proud of you.